I think it's time to take a break from this project and go and do something much more entertaining. It's time to build a kit. I haven't done a kit in a while. At least not an electronics kit. I've done a couple of uh, uh, model railroading kits, but it's time for an electronics kit. So, last week on my Patreon, I gave the supporters there the choice of these six kits and let them vote on it. And they didn't choose the shift register based chase circuit, they didn't choose the sound activated switch, they didn't ch choose the um, series regulator power supply, they didn't choose the optically controlled relay, they didn't choose the LED hourglass kit. They did cho instead choose the HV-1 high voltage spark igniter. The only one in the bunch that's likely to actually cause me pain or burn down my house. Thanks guys. Actually no, thanks guys really. I appreciate the input and I appreciate your ongoing support. So that's what we're building. This little high voltage spark igniter kit. So let's see what we got in the kit. I've looked a little bit through this uh, in the mailbag where I got it, um, but we'll pull things out. It's a fairly straightforward kit. The only weird component is this one, but we'll get back to that. So we have a little tactile switch. Let's zoom in. There we go. So we have a little tactile switch, just a little on off button, a fairly beefy resistor. According to the silk screen, it is a 33 ohm one watt resistor. We have a diode, uh, the silk screen says, and I can, oh, it's just magnifying glass that, where is it? That is a 1N5819 diode. According to the data sheet, it is a 1 amp Schottky barrier rectifier which is good for up to 40 volts in the reverse direction and as it said one amp and the uh, forward voltage drop is between 0.6 and 0.9 volts depending on the current that's measured at that very high currents one and three amps so um, yeah so that's that's that guy uh, what else have we got here we have a 470 microfarad 16 volt capacitor uh, some mechanical bits and pieces the transistor which is going to be doing the heavy lifting and it is a d880-y which according to the data sheet is an npn silicon power transistor 3 amp 60 volt 30 watts and then we have some mechanical hardware, as I mentioned earlier. The board itself, which is not a bad looking little board. Double sided, fairly significant ground point on both sides. Um, got a little heat sink pad for the transistor, which is plated through. I'll just spread heat onto the back. And then this little guy, which appears to be a transformer. Um, with, I'm going to guess, a center tap uh, primary, or actually it's functionally, it's two primary coils that are joined together in series to create the center tap, and then a secondary, which looks to be the high voltage. And I notice that of these primary wires, one pair is a heavier gauge than the other pair. So I'll have to uh, take a little closer look at this. So I think I'm going to uh, draw this circuit out while we're investigating in here before I actually build it because I couldn't find a schematic for this thing anywhere online. So we'll go through the process because it's a simple little circuit and might as well take the time to do this. It's not going to take that long. So we have a uh, DC 3 to 5.3 volts in, positive and negative. So, K 
Okay, and if we look, one go or the negative goes onto the ground plane, and the positive just plates through. So there's a negative on the ground plane, the positive plates through, and goes to one side of this component, and the other side is uh, on ground. So I'm going to guess that that is, in fact, yeah, capacitor, which is in parallel for smoothing. That's this guy here. So next from the positive side of the capacitor, we go to the center tap of the transformer. So we'll draw it like that. Okay. So where does the... So there's two different sides of the transformer. Um, this side goes down to here and through the diode. Not sure which side that is yet, but that's going that way. Through the diode that way. And then jumps to this pad, which goes through the resistor. That way. And then the other side of the resistor goes to one side of the switch. So let's draw that switch like that because it's a push button. And so that's one side of the switch. Those two aren't connected. The other side of the switch goes to one pin of the transistor, which is, let's draw the transistor just for a reference here. And I could go back to the data sheet, but I'm gonna do it a little bit more old school. Well not really old school, but I'm going to do it as if I didn't have the data sheet just to figure out what's going on. So I'll plug them into my little transistor testomatic here. If I can get the pins in. And we'll see what this is and we'll draw it out. So pin 1 is over here, that's the base. The center pin, pin 2 is the collector. And pin 3 is the emitter. Okay. So I'll push that out of the way and the on these TO220s usually one of the pins is common with the tab. In this case it's the middle one which is the collector which makes sense because that's where all the current is going to be dissipated. So uh, where were we? Right. So the push button connects to that pin which is this pin which is the base of the transistor. It's an NPN transistor, so I will draw the arrow on it. Um, for the emitter, which is this side here, which is going to the ground plane. Okay, uh, oops, wrong one. That's the emitter going to the ground plane. Pretend that's not there. Do I have any white out? No, I don't. White paint? No. So the collector now, it is the middle one. And you can see, actually, the trace. The collector is connected up to there. And it's connected to there. But I can't see where else it goes. So... Right, there's the collector. So where else does it go? We'll just poke around the board until we find it. Aha! The other side of the, trans, uh, the transformer. So that actually goes up, jump over there, that goes there. And then being a transformer, it's going to have another winding out there, which goes to the sparky bits, which are going to cause me damage if I'm not careful. Okay, so uh, that's what's going on here. So when the push button is not pushed, the base is disconnected, transistor is off. There's five volts sitting between there and that's an open circuit. So there's five volts minus a little, well, when there's no current flowing, there's no resistance. So there is actually just five volts sitting on the collector and ground sitting on the emitter. When you push the button that turns the transistor fairly hard on because this will have whatever resistance that is, plus this 33 ohms and that 
1.6 voltage drop across there. So that's going to drive the base of that transistor fairly hard, slam it hard on, and that'll put the 5 volts through this coil to ground, which means that's going to um, create the magnetic field and is going to excite this side and create sparky sparks. But also, these two are wound... Well, I'm not sure. I'm, I've been trying to figure out how how this transistor or that the uh, the transformer does its thing. I'm thinking that these are wound in opposite directions of each other, which is which would cause that uh, winding to cancel this one out and shut it off. Because what has to happen is this has to be set up, this has to act like an oscillator. So something has to, as soon as this starts drawing its current through this winding, uh, something has to shut it off, shut the base of the transistor back off again, otherwise it wouldn't oscillate, right? So I'm guessing that these two are wound in opposite directions so that when this thing starts drawing current, it, its field not only goes into this uh, secondary coil, but also goes into the other primary coil backwards and shuts off the base of the transistor. That's my, that's my best estimation. Like I said, I couldn't find in English a theory of operation of this thing online. I found lots of places selling them and a couple of foreign language videos building them, but they didn't describe in English how it works and I didn't find a schematic anywhere online. Theory lesson's over. Let's build it. Get to my Biku Heiko knockoff here. Throw a bit of water on the sponge that came with it. I do have one of those curly uh, copper things, which I sometimes use, but I'm just old school and I'm used to using these, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's get the components up here where everybody can see them. As is my habit, I tend to put in the least likely to be damaged components first so that uh, if they get heated repeatedly, they're not going to uh, die, basically, during the process. So, hold that guy in place. Clean my iron. Solder on there. And let's get busy putting the first thing on, which is the power input terminals and they are oh, oh that didn't this one's going to take some heat because it's on the ground plane okay that held this one didn't take because I was impatient The solid in there. I might just reflow that. There. Okay. So that's that guy. What's next? Oh, actually, I'm just going to build it in order. So next up is the smoothing capacitor, which is sitting in parallel. And that pokes through. It obviously is designed to lie down on its side here. So I will accommodate that. And again, I'm soldering onto the ground plane, so it's going to take a fair bit of heat. This one's, it's a big trace too, but it's not the entire ground plane of the board. Okay, that's reasonably on there. Toss those aside. Next up, uh, I guess I'll put the push button in. Where is it? Again, it's not easily damaged by temperature. It's 
still I don't want to melt the plastic. So there's the two contacts that matter. The other two are just for mechanical mounting. There's that. Next guy in is the big resistor. 33 ohms, 1 watt. So 33 ohms, because we're a maximum 5 volt circuit on the base side of the transistor, that's just going to be limiting the current, the base current of the transistor so that it doesn't you know, catch fire. Um, but the 1 watt means there is going to be a certain amount of current driving it. And the transistor, what did it say for base current? Half an amp is what it says on the on the data sheet. So that's fairly significant actually. Although if I, I don't know if I'm going to run this thing for long enough for the resistor to get hot, but you never know. What happened there? Okay. As I figured, this thing's going through, going together fairly quickly. Now then, this transistor, so it mounts on that hole. It looks like the bends go just below the shoulders. It's got a nice clean bend there. I think you're going to bolt it into place before I actually solder it. Just make it easier on myself later. Oh, come on. Little screw, get in there. This will be easier with a screwdriver, I think. Here we go. Okay, those are sitting fairly nice. Now, other questions that I never found an answer to in my searching was what is the frequency of that oscillator that we're creating in here? I've been trying to figure out how to measure that without blowing up any of my test equipment. Cheap though it is, I don't want to destroy it because it's what I have. The other question is, what is the voltage going to be on the secondary side? And I don't know if I can measure it. I don't know if I want to try because with AC voltage, first of all, none of my uh, meters are really rated for doing high frequencies. And even at that, they're all maxing out at a thousand volts. This guy maxes out at 750 AC. So between those two, I'm concerned that I won't get an accurate reading and I'll blow it up all in the same breath. So I'm not quite sure if I will do that. Maybe I'll see if I can find if there is some kind of reference online for length of a spark gap versus voltage that could be reasonable okay so um this side over here is the one going to the collector which is that one up there and that's the one that's going to have the highest current on it this one that's tickling the base will have lower current on it so as i noticed earlier one of these has a higher gauge wire on it than the other so i'm going to put that one on the collector side and hmm, i'm going to turn this around a little bit here so that i can see both sides kind of sort of there it's not ideal but and i think and i will put the center tap through first 
And uh, I'll put the heavy one on as well. And bend them that way. And try and solder them. This doesn't look... Hmm. No, I think I'll put that back up. Well, no. I'm going to solder at least the heavy one first. I'm going to have to get my head around this side. And... Okay, now that's going to stay. Now I'll flip this around so you can see what I'm doing again. It's one thing, it's a little bit awkward doing this both so that I can see what I'm doing, so that I do a reasonable job of it, and so that you can see what I'm doing, which is a good portion of the whole point of this exercise. Oh man, hang on here. You get in there. Okay, that is the extent of the soldering. Trim those off. Now then, just to physically mount this, and the um, hmm, the one demo video of building this that I did watch that was linked from, I don't remember who it was, Icy Station, I think, just showed bundling those up underneath there. They are enamel wrapped, so theoretically... They shouldn't short against each other, or enamel wrapped, enamel dipped, you know, magnet wire or transformer wire or whatever. And of course, it would be transformer wire because it's a transformer. Get on there, you. That's a little bit awkward to do on camera. I'll go cut that flush because that's what you do so you don't hurt yourself on them later okay there it is that's the easy part done now then I think I'm going to make a bit of a spark gap there move a bunch of stuff out of the way and hook it up and see what happens so um I'm going to push this clicky switch with something non-conductive because I'm scared. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to set it to watch current and wow, it goes into current limiting at one amp. Wow. Okay. Let's turn that off and I'll turn the current up current limit up to let's try one and a half amps power it on okay nothing happens let's move these a little bit closer that's disappointing Oh, you can't see that. I'm going to turn off my bench lights and let's see what happens now. So push the button and see the little arc. There we go. We're creating an arc. That's cool. And we're drawing a full 1.4. 1.5 amps we're going into current limiting over there so I'm going to even just sitting at idle right now 
it's drawing a quarter of an amp. Wow. I'm going to turn the current limiting up to about 1.7. Strike an arc. Wow, I can draw that arc way out there. Wow, that is some distance. I'm going to shut that off and short that out just to make sure. I'm going to bend that down a little bit so it's closer to the bench. It's wood underneath this here, so I'm not too concerned about that. Let me get out my ruler here which is in inches. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a newer one. And I'm going to put that close to there and turn him on and push the button. The reason I'm using a plastic thing to push the button is because that collector is really close. Okay, there's my arc. quarter inch, a little bit over a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of research to figure out how much of an arc you can sustain over a quarter of an inch. I'm back from a little bit of thinking and I th believe I figured out how I can measure the frequency of this thing without actually blowing anything up. First of all, I've increased the voltage on my power supply to 5 volts because this thing claims to be able to do that, which should give me a little bit stronger arc. Then I've got my cheap wee scope here with the, uh, the measurement lead close but not touching. So there's an air gap wider than the gap of the arc. It's not grounded. It's running off a battery. So it should be safe from damage. Uh, so I turn on my power supply and push the button. There's the arc and there we go. And as you can see, the frequency is about 30 kilohertz and drops to nothing. And actually I'm going to just break the arc by pulling it apart. And there is even... So it's about 26 kilohertz, 27 kilohertz without the arc. So that's just the primary side doing its thing without the secondary side. But here's, then the secondary side is now on. And yeah, so there we go. Um, 28 kilohertz thereabouts. Now that noise, that 100 kilohertz noise, that is just the power supply because it's a switching power supply. I shut it off. That goes away. And while I've got the uh, power supply up to 5 volts, and I've got the millimeter scale now on my ruler handy, turn it on. Let's just see how much at 5 volts it does. That's a centimeter. That's 12, 13 millimeters, something like that. Okay, I did a little bit of researching and with the help of our friend Google, I discovered this handy dandy little calculator. The simple formula, the voltage equals the air gap length in centimeters times 30,000. So 30,000 times, let's say it was 1.2 centimeters. 36 kV. Wow. It was probably a little bit higher, but my measurement wasn't all that accurate because I'm scared to get close to this thing. I'm sure it bites. Well, that was some interesting fun and games. Um, it's been a long time since I've uh, uh, played with high voltage, and even back then it was closer to 1 kV, which is bite voltage on tube uh, supplies. This is just silly voltage, 36 kV, wow, or thereabouts. 
Um, the other thing that I noticed after running for a while, that base resistor, that 33 ohm one watt base resistor got noticeably warm, as warm as the transistor itself, possibly a little bit more. Um, but I didn't notice that while I was running it, of course, because I was using my insulated or at least non-conductive uh, tweezers here. They're not non-static, they're not heat resistant, so they got to be good for something, right? Um, and I guess there isn't really any high voltage in here. I probably couldn't hurt myself, assuming this thing has good isolation from primary to secondary, assuming my finger doesn't slip. I, I don't like pain, so that's why I was doing it that way. But other than the potential risk, and I'm sorry I didn't get to show you guys an electro boom moment, but I was really trying to avoid those. I, that was kind of a fun little project to put together. Uh, neat uh, research, trying to find out uh, how to figure out the voltage, uh, reverse engineering to create the schematic, since apparently nobody else online has done one. Or at least if they did, it's not searchable in English. Yeah. All in all, a pleasant experience. Thank you to the guys on Patreon for voting for this thing. Despite my suspicion that you're trying to kill me. Um, thank you to everybody else for watching. Um, if you have anything to say about this, please join me down in the comments for a discussion. Talk to you later.